All right, so we had breaking news this morning and kind of an interesting whole situation that played out. So let's get into it. First things first, uh, you know, as COVID cases are continuing to rise, we're seeing this, you know, affect the NFL seemingly every week. There's always a handful of guys that get, you know, in COVID protocol are unable to play. Uh, This week, the big headline is Kirk Cousins. Uh, Obviously, you know, uh, him being unvaccinated, that's going to, you know, get some extra attention. There's no denying that. Listen, uh, I'm not here to talk about the politics of the whole situation just because I feel like everyone's made their mind up already. I'm not touching that hornet's nest. You guys can argue about it in the comments below, which I'm sure you will. Uh, But let's just try to talk about football and how this affects the whole football side of things. But in terms of the football side of things, it's obviously disappointing to see a, a you know, a team really in the biggest game of their season be out their starting quarterback, regardless of the reason for it. Uh, but we kind of was, were thinking, okay, well, it might not be the worst thing in the world. Kellen Mond is a prospect who a lot of people were really high on. I, I love Kellen Mond coming out of college. If you watch my, uh, you know, when I covered the all the guys earlier this season, you know, I'm a big Kellen Mond guy. I think that uh, he has a lot of potential, even though he didn't necessarily play great in the preseason. Uh, I think that there's still a lot of hope, especially with the fact that it'll probably be a run heavy uh, game plan. So, you know, that already being the case, given that it's going to be, you know, what, 10 degrees below or whatever it's supposed to be. uh, That kind of makes you think, okay, well, this might not be the worst news in the world from the football side of things. Then the, I think, even more surprising news dropped when it is not going to be Kellen Mond who is starting. It is going to be Sean Mannon, uh, who is actually getting removed from COVID protocol today. Uh, And he's someone who is going to be the starter, which I I don't know about this. Uh, This makes very little sense to me. So uh, first, worth mentioning that he did get more snaps in the preseason than another guy who is worth mentioning, which is Kyle uh, Slaughter, I think is how you pronounce his name, uh, who, he's another guy who you could argue should be getting to start right here, uh, Slaughter played, uh, again, it's not Slaughter, well, I'll, we'll call him Kyle, because I don't know his, how to pronounce his last name, uh, sorry, very unprofessional by me, but he, I remember actually watching him in the preseason, I was studying that closely, because I was wanting to watch Kellen Mond, and I thought that he looked pretty good there, not spectacular, only 53 snaps, so I, you know, uh, how can you really evaluate that too much, but he looked solid in preseason, and he, I would certainly say outperformed Manon in the preseason. So I'm a little surprised that Manon gets the job uh, over Kyle just from that alone. But I guess one of my questions is last week, Kellen Mond was the backup, right? So you had Kellen Mond already as the backup. You had Kellen Mond as, uh, you know, the guy who he took the second most snaps in the preseason. He took 120 snaps. So he was a seemingly the guy, and I believe Cousins took the most, although that I, could, I didn't fact check that. That could be wrong. But uh, either way, out of these backups, Mon was the guy you put the most amount of resources in. You drafted him with a third round pick. Why spend that pick on him if you're not even going to use him this season? Are you hoping for you know him to be someone down the road? It's worth mentioning. We don't see what's going on behind the scenes, but even if he's not NFL ready, at this point, see what you got in him, right? Just see what you have, because sometimes guys don't seem NFL ready in practice, but actually play really well in games. That does happen. There's a difference between playing well in practice and playing well in a game. And again, for a guy like Sean Mannon, who, listen, uh, I don't want to be, you know, too harsh on the guy. Like, okay, he's not, he might not be a superstar or anything like that. But you look at his numbers, uh, he's had 212 career dropbacks. Uh, he was, uh, you know, drafted in the third round himself back in 2015, been around the league for a little bit. And in his 214 dropbacks, his passer rating is 57 Point five. He has never thrown in a, t- a touchdown in the NFL, has thrown three interceptions. Not great. Again, I think the logic behind this probably is like, hey, we're going to run the ball uh, for a bunch of our snaps in this one. I wouldn't be shocked if they do something similar to like the Patriots and only throw the ball three times. And so in that case, maybe you do uh, go with someone else. I think that could be the logic. But even if that's what you're doing, I feel like you're kind of tipping your hand and letting Green Bay know, hey, You know, it's a day before practice, but with all this new information coming out, or excuse me, it's a day before the game, but with this new information coming out, maybe we just got to focus on uh, stopping the run, you know, change some things a little bit. It does tip your hand a little bit. So uh, I don't know. 
Weird decision. Uh, that's, I think, where I'm going to leave this at. Uh, weird decision. I don't know if I fully understand this, but maybe you guys uh, have different points or maybe an, an angle I didn't think of. Uh, so if you do have that, let me know in the comments below. Wild stuff. Just wild stuff. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.